Yo, what up? Josh Rubin from East West Hailing. I'm back. I'm going to be doing a YouTube every single week now. Just got a little tired and overwhelmed from getting our program together. We're launching a new website on November 1st. Check us out, East West Healing and Performance. EastWestHealing.com, actually. Been teaching a lot for the Czech Institute. Been traveling and taking my courses in Canada, Vancouver, what up, love ya. And studying osteopathy, which I'm just fascinated with. Um, just got a lot going on, which is all good. Just been super busy and had to take a break. Had to listen to my body and just needed to take a break from YouTube, but I'm back. Today I want to talk about vertigo. We get a lot of people that email us, call us. We know a lot of people with vertigo and people are suffering. And my opinion is you don't have to suffer. If you really understand the basics of the body and you understand how the body works and you listen to the body, then you can actually help yourself. You can find the right person to work with. So I recommend based off what I'm talking about, most people are going to watch this and say, wow, well, what do I do with this? You need to find a skilled, interview people. You know, don't just work with someone because they have credentials after their name. Interview them. So work with a skilled cranial sacral therapist. Find a skilled osteopath that is specializing in manual therapy or manual medicine. Typically, some are trained in the U.S., some are trained outside the U.S. But it's important that you work with someone that understand the different cranial bones, how they move, the fascial connections, the sinuses in there, the brain, uh, the different ventricles, their fascia relationships with the cervical, thoracic, lumbar spine, pelvis, sacrum, foot, and so forth. It's super important, as well as their intimate relationship with the organs. And it's important because when it comes to vertigo, you want to really evaluate the entire body. And this is a YouTube clip, so take it with a grain of salt. But three cranial nerves that are really important. You have 12 cranial nerves. Three cranial nerves that are really important are cranial nerve 6, 7, 8. The abducens which innervates the lateral rectus muscle, the facial nerve, which is seven, and eight, which is the vestibular cochlear nerve. And this is important for many reasons, and I'm going to try to give you just a brief explanation of why. If you're looking at your cranium from the front, this would be your face, sorry. This is the back of your cranium, your occiput, which, uh, you know, based off embryological origin, it's actually four bones. You have your temporal bone, which is this pink bone right here, which is your ear in a sense. That's actually three bones in itself. But I want to try to simplify this. Every time you breathe, in a sense, or the natural uh, you know, respiration mechanism of your body, your occiput phenod have an intimate relationship, as well as the other bones of your body, but we're focusing on this right now. So every time you inhale, the occiput actually goes backwards. The sphenod actually dro drops forward and goes more caudal. You get more of a, that's inhalation. And then exhalation, they flex or they come back to neutral, in a sense. They don't go like this, right? And that's important for many reasons. We could say, well, the pituitary actually sits right here on the sphenoid, on the cella turcica. So every time you breathe or this bone moves properly, you're milking the pituitary. So people that have maybe hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, thyroid, gonad, gut issues, it could actually more, be more of a structural issue and not nutritional and physiological. It's showing physiological issues, but it's more physical. So you have to think about that when it comes to vertigo, because everyone says it's nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. And that's important because having severe hormone imbalances, being estrogen dominant, progesterone deficient, causing orthostatic hypotension or migraines, causing vertigo, uh, having certain types of um, blood sugar handling issues or metal, uh, heavy metal toxicities, all these things can cause vertigo for sure. But you need to always look at all the pieces to the healing puzzle and one of them is physical. So if we think of vertical, and of course, there's other things that can cause vertical physically, like the different sinuses in the body or ventricles, if there's issues with those, that can cause vertigo. But we're talking about cranial nerves, six, seven, eight. So it's important. I'm going over the basic mechanics for a simple reason. Cranial nerves six, two through six, sorry, actually go through the superior orbital fissure of the sphenoid. And that's that hole right there. So in a simplistic sense, every time you breathe you know, correctly, or the sutures are moving, or based on its normal mechanism, it's moving properly, you milk these nerves, you massage them. If you have a lesion of the occiput and sphenoid, the temporal sphenoid, frontal sphenoid, parietals, you know, the top of your head and occiput, occiput temporal, and so forth, it could be many different things. It could be coming from your foot or your pelvis, who knows. But anytime you have a lesion or a restriction, you, la you basically end up maybe impinging the nerve, you... Um, you affect how the nerve actually innervates what it's supposed to. You're not milking the nerve anymore. You actually increase sympathetic output and you downregulate parasympathetic input or output. So it's important to look at the mechanics of these bones. That's why I recommend working with a skilled osteopath that does manual therapy or a skilled craniosacral therapist. So when it comes to cranial nerve six, abducens, the reason we bring this up, it's a motor nerve. 
It actually comes out through the superior open fissure and innervates the lateral rectus muscle of the eye, which actually um, will cause, sorry, will cause, you know, abduction of the eyes per se. So if you have an impingement of this nerve and you have lack of motor input to these muscles, it can cause atrophy of those muscles and cause more of a compensatory mechanism of the medial rectus or the superior oblique or the inferior oblique, uh, all, all those different muscles in the eye, which can actually stimulate certain types of visual disturbances of vertigo. Now that nerve alone is not going to cause it, it's just a nerve to look at. If you look at cranial nerve 7, so 6 was abducens, we look at cranial nerve 7, which is motor and sensory, it's the facial, there's five branches to the facial nerve. But cranial nerve 7 and 8, this is your temporal bone, the bone on the side, right, the pink bone, actually come out from the internal acoustic meatus, the external or auditory meatus is your air hole, so the inside of it is the internal acoustic meatus. And every time you breathe or these bones move properly, and you know your sphenoid and your ossip doing this, your temporal bone, take this off, sorry, will actually, every time you inhale and those bo bones move properly, it's actually going to, uh, you're looking at the inside of it, it's going to anteriorly rotate and out flare, and then on exhalation, it's going to posteriorly rotate the neutral and in flare in a sense based on normal mechanism. So it actually massages cranial nerve 7 and 8 because it goes through that hole. Now cranial nerve 7, one of the most important things it does, it actually innervates the stapedius muscle, which is one of the smallest muscles in the body, which attaches to the petrous portion of the temporal and plays a part on regulating the stapes, you know, bone in the ear. So we have a lack of innervation to that muscle, and this muscle in a sense, and that part of the ear regulates sound coming in, the sound waves and things like that. If we have an issue with the temporal and the parietals, the, this bone right here, or the temporal on the occiput, or different ligaments in here, um, the sphenoid in the temporal, or we have fascia restrictions, anything that affects how this bone moves, we lack milking to the seventh cranial nerve, facial nerve, which can affect what's going in the air, what we hear, um, and the regulation of sound which can actually stimulate the vertigo. So it's another important nerve to look at. The last nerve, probably the most important, goes through the same aspect of the temporal bone, internal acoustic meatus. Now, all those different things in the body, the cranium, can cause the same thing. The bottom line is, if it's not moving properly, we have an issue. So cranial nerve 8 is the vestibulococular nerve. So it actually regulates balance, right, vestibulo, but it also regulates hearing, cochlear. So we can say people with hearing issues have a problem. So if we downregulate the innervation, if we impinge that nerve because we have a lesion in this bone or another bone that's restricting the movement of this bone in a say, and a lot of the times the iliac bone, the fibula, different fascia on the side of the body, the lateral fascial chain of the body can affect the temporal as well. The uterus can affect the temporal because the uterus sits in the middle of the central chain of the body and actually attaches through a ligament to the iliac bones. So anytime the iliac bones have an issue, well, there's an issue in that ligament, it's going to cause a torsion, right, just like this, either way, which can cause a torsional issue in the temporal bone. So we need to look at the vestibulococular nerve, which can affect balance and hearing. So I know this YouTube clip was a little intense, but my philosophy is you have to understand what's going on so you can actually help yourself. Because if you don't know what's going on, you're going to see this person and that person and this person because they say they can help you. But maybe they don't understand the basics of the cranial movements, fascia, the different nerves, um, the different sinuses. And they're going to be doing their treatments. You're going to be paying them. And then six months later, you're going to say, your treatments suck. I didn't get any results. Well, the problem is maybe you didn't do enough research and you just went with them because they said they could help you. So if you understand the basics and understanding that it's the cranial bones that milk the nerves, you need to look at cranial nerve 6, 7, 8, you need to look at the sphenoid, the occiput, you need to look at the temporal bones, and have someone, I'm not saying you need to look at it, but you need to find someone that can actually look at them to help you so you don't suffer from vertigo. So thanks for tuning in, hope you enjoyed it, I'm back, I'll see you next week, I'm out of here.